30 lucky wildlife conservationists gathered beside a pool near Fakenham. A ripple of excitement said that something important was about to happen at Sculthorpe Moor, flagship reserve of the Hawke and Owl Trust. The release of two beavers. On the 21st of April, 2022, the culmination of four years of careful planning to help this magnificent animal's return to Norfolk. Wild beavers were hunted to extinction for their fur some five centuries ago. So this unique opportunity to watch the secretive nocturnal mammal swimming in broad daylight was a moment that the volunteers here will never forget. This is a heartwarming story. Back in 2019, this open area, formerly a poplar plantation within the reserve, was designated to be a perfect area for beaver release, but at a major cost. At the outset, the works looked brutal, as heavy machinery tracked back and forth, digging, scraping and shifting thousands of tonnes of topsoil to create a completely new ecological landscape. The land, which was meadow for centuries before being obliterated by the poplar trees, may once have been special in its own way, but would soon be transformed to something completely different and far more diverse. The logistics of this project were quite daunting. It was expected to take four years from start to finish. A big plan on a grand scale, and it wouldn't be cheap but overall was considered well worthwhile and that having started, it would finish. What looked like destruction was meticulously dug to a specific plan to create an area of higher biodiversity than was there before. But they persevered and pretty soon got well down the road to the finished product. All the surface soil and gravel which had initially been removed from the site, was returned to create a patchwork of pools and creeks. Not at random, but with a clear understanding of how to best utilize this pure, clean water, which continuously seeps up from the chalk aquifers deep below the surface. The water is of high quality, clear of agricultural and chemical pollutants, a purity instantly recognized by wildlife. Egrets and lapwings homed in and plants responded. Phragmites reeds re-sprouted from old roots deep below the digger's reach. As the weeks went by, insects and other aquatic life soon arrived to inhabit this newly provided ecological niche, a natural invasion from the surrounding land and water. The old saying that nature abhors a vacuum was demonstrated in abundance. Once the noisy machines had completed their work and withdrawn, the open area of lagoons was left to quietly settle. But then a new work front was opened. Towards the end of the summer of 2021, the roar of machines came this time from the adjoining woodland, as chainsaws began to cut new pathways into the densely packed trees. Once again, a wild area seemed under attack. Just as the old meadow had been converted to wetland, so the older wood was to be improved and diversified to provide an ideal habitat for the beavers. Just enough alder, ash and birch trees were felled to give access to the digger to create a network of channels through the 20-acre wood. The peaty ground was so soft that the 12-ton digger was run on broad mats. Once again, the surface was scraped down to the subsoil of sandy gravel, overlaying the chalk beneath. This was not rough or random, but skilled precision work. The job required that the digger driver 
followed the natural seepage of water and where it wanted to flow, which determined how deep to dig. Come the winter, and the woodland was quiet again. Before long, the channels were full. This was now the reality of a dream imagined for years by its creator. Reserve warden Nigel Middleton takes up his story. Here we are in the middle of Skullfoot Moor. This is traditionally plantation woodland and it was used back in the 1880s for charcoal. From a biodiverse point of view, it's rich for things like mosses and liverworts, but we're going to introduce the breavers in here and through the winter months we've actually created these channels so that these beavers have somewhere. There's no flowing water through here when it was a problem. So we decided to bring a series of channels through here. We put machines in, we had to take a few of the trees down, um, which actually will reshoot so they'll be coppiced. And we've created this system of channels where the water is flowing through. And just directly behind me here, we've got a lovely trickle of gentle flowing water, ideal place for the beavers to build their dams because they love building the dams, and eventually it will raise the water levels, and lots of these lows in this lovely woodland will actually be, create pools. And that's become a fantastic habitat for things like dragonflies and that, but it's ideal for beavers. It's just what they want. So the timetable now is that um, we hopefully release the beavers in April, and that time spring will be flourishing, and all of this will change. This whole landscape will change. Everything will be in flower, Plants will start coming up, the grasses, the sedges, the reeds, good browsing for the beavers to be in here. Obviously the tree canopy will fall in, but because we put the channel through, it's enabled us to open up to the light as well, whereas normally during spring and during the summer, there's not much lighting this wooden at all. So it's going to create areas where there's going to be light, aquatic plants are going to establish, and that's generally where these beavers will be actually benefiting the whole biodiverse atmosphere in here. Already the wood was starting to resemble the primeval forests of northern Europe. But the peace of this idyll would soon be shattered. To ensure the beavers' security, it was vital that they were contained and would not be likely to escape prematurely. It's well known that beavers will happily dig through wet mud in the soil in their constant search for areas to colonize and flood. So at every point where water already flowed or was likely to flow as levels rose, solid culverts had to be installed. And beaver-proof steel piping was laid. And over the top, a mass of rock to hold all in place. So tightly packed, it would be completely beaver-proof. These culverts would also serve as vehicular access points to the area soon to be enclosed. At the end of this phase of the plan, all the dug areas have filled with water to the expected level. It's been four years in the, the making um, and we're now at the final development stage here. It's full of water at the moment, but come spring, we'll be able to allow the water to lower and when the water goes down and we let the water go down, you will see all these wonderful pools and they're all gravelly in the bottom. The water is ground fed, so it's good quality, clean water. You've got a nice meandering channel run up the middle of here, so when we do draw the water down, there's still deep water for the fish that are in here but lots of species will use this. It's completely transformed this area from an area that was just plantation woodland. Through the development of this wetland, we've recorded everything, and so it's been closely monitored. And we did this by a series of lock-off posts. One is directly behind me, where the cameras were set up and they were always taken from the same place at each stage of the development of this wetland. Um, so let's give us a good record of how this has developed from where it was 
to where it is now. One of the things that we're very keen to do in Skullthorpe is engage with the public and to that end we are installing a new hide which you can see on the left of me behind me and that obviously will give enjoyment for the public, somewhere for them to actually appreciate what we've done here. And the work to complete this magnificent hide has been done by the volunteers of Skullthorpe Moor Reserve. It took almost a year. A great many people were involved in the construction and there was never a shortage of willing hands who all worked with passionate enthusiasm. Many professional skills were voluntarily brought to the building. All in all, a huge achievement which reflects the dedication of all the supporters of Skullthorpe Moor Reserve. Out on the pools, the peace was disturbed once more. The machines were back. The final big job was the construction of the perimeter fence. The 47 acre site required a mile and a half of high tensile netting. A thousand six foot posts were driven in with a pile driver. With such a massive length, a contract team with their specialized fence making equipment wasted no time. Big machines make a big job faster and easier. Although the professionals installed the major parts, they advised the volunteers on how best to complete the fiddly detail of tying it all in and arranging the overhangs in case any nimble beaver attempted to climb out. But once again, the volunteers were eager to finish this job. The bottom of the fence is not dug into the ground, but laid flat on the inside, so any would-be escapers quickly realize there is no easy way to dig out. And to be extra sure, steel pins were driven in to hold it all together. As winter turned to spring, the wood came to life once more. Dark black peat turned to bright green as the promised sunshine warmed the water. On land liable to flooding, a major benefit of beaver activity is that following heavy rain, their dams can hold back vast quantities of water, thereby preventing the damage otherwise caused by a sudden overwhelming flood. With the fences up, the culverts still had to be reinforced with high security barriers to reassure neighbors that there was no way a beaver could slip out unseen. Early in the spring of 2022, and the work within was finally completed, but for one last job on the very edge of the pen. A separate pool designed as the release point. Nigel had thought of every detail, so that when the time comes, volunteers and supporters would be able to see the very moment the beavers arrive to be released into their new home. A winding ditch snakes away from the pool into the heart of the woods. And so, the big day arrived. The 21st of April, the sun was shining and key supporters of the Skullthorpe Moor Hawk Canal Trust assembled for this moment. There was a definite atmosphere of excitement. Nigel briefed the crowd on what he expected to happen. So, we've got to let her do what she wants to do and probably just let her go because she'll probably swim straight out of the way because she just want to be out of the way of people and everything else but she might change once she gets in the water um, and then the nation's top beaver expert dr rasheen campbell palmer was here to supervise the release something that she's done many times in other parts of the country like a conjurer preparing her table the boxes were aligned and the cameras started to whir and click. And then the first flicker of fur.
exactly as predicted, straight to the water for a cooling, refreshing dip. And the first opportunity for watchers to see an animal not seen in the wilds of East Anglia for over four centuries. It was an emotional moment. The calm behavior of this female was reassuring. She seemed almost to know that this might be a good place to live. One mighty slap of her tail told that though cautious, things looked pretty good for a beaver in search of a new home. The chosen beavers were a female from Scotland and a male from Yorkshire, though at this point they had not actually met. Having seen that the older experienced female was calm, it was time for the young male to make his debut. And he was even more laid back. His thick fur gleamed in the warm sunshine. Only when this close can you see the peculiarly flat tail, the distinctive feature of all beavers. A very useful tool for sending signals. It didn't take them long to work out where the route to the woods lay. Nigel and Rasheen were greatly reassured of these animals' sense of security as they had time to stop for a quick wash and brush up. A few days later, Nigel and Rasheen led the volunteers into the enclosure to search for telltale signs of wood chips and bark stripped from willow branches. Observation of beavers released at other sites elsewhere in the UK reveal that once they're totally familiar with their territory and kept relatively undisturbed, they'll tolerate people watching from a polite distance. But in such a large, dense enclosure, the only way to monitor the success of normally strictly nocturnal mammals would be with trail cameras, one of the greatest modern innovations for studying all wildlife. They're automatic cameras triggered by the movement of any passing creature. Attached low down on the side of trees near water, these cameras not only record by day, but even in total darkness. Once in place, 
their sensitivity can be adjusted to record whatever is required. And here is proof of their value, not only recording the picture of a beaver at work, but complete with a soundtrack as it chomps and chews its way through the bark of a fallen tree. The new hide is perfect for watching wildlife on the lagoons, but the beavers will probably not venture out into the open until they're totally at ease in the woodland. Meanwhile, the fixed cameras capture their neighbours, the muntjac deer. And at night, the cameras reveal a most contented pair of beavers, living their lives as though they'd always been here. And when no one's looking, time for a private scratch. Establishing new paths and walking over frogs. And getting to know each other in the time-honored fashion mutual grooming. They're not alone. A pair of otters visit the same territory, but they don't compete. Otters are carnivores and beavers are herbivores. Muntjac deer reach up for green leaves, not bark. So three large mammals can coexist in some harmony. It didn't take long before our beavers constructed their first dam. Branches, sticks and mud tightly packed to create a new pond, which will be their most important contribution to the biodiversity of the reserve. Their pools become home for fish which arrive without human intervention. And home to all their predators like otters, kingfishers and herons. And other animals come and go. Typical local residents like pheasants and brown hares enjoy this peaceful refuge. And on the pools, visiting redshank and lapwing successfully breeding from the outset. In summer, visitors drop in too, like cuckoos. And all gain from this great project. The beavers have no idea of the broad benefits they create for all other wildlife. They just mind their own business and do their own thing. Nigel is modest about his role in this huge project, but it was his imagination and vision that has created a new piece of heaven on earth. It doesn't seem possible. Less than six weeks ago, we released the beavers in here. And for me personally, it was quite an emotional moment um, to see a, a mammal that had become extinct as a breeding mammal within the British Isles, now coming back in to its wild situation. Beavers are marvelous creatures. They do wonderful things for the habitats, especially what we've got here at Skullthorpe. The, the, the habitat here is going to benefit from it, although we are doing extensive monitoring to have a look and make sure that um, there is all gains and no minuses um, of life that's already in existence here. We've got a regular team now just recording dragonflies, butterflies, plants, small mammals, and we'll just see how the whole ecosystem evolves with beavers in place. I can tell you, sitting here now, 
this woodland has a different energy to it. Some people might not understand what I'm trying to say, but it is completely changed and transformed since these creatures have been here. It's so strange that I've walked in here so many times prior to the beaver release because we were putting these channels and everything in. And I walked in here on that Saturday morning and there was a completely different energy. It really was a strange feeling, to say the least. Um, and now I know why, because, you know, they are enigmatic creatures and they're just part of our landscape. They should be here. Also part of this project, um, we've been developing a new wetland area, which is in part of the, the um, beaver enclosure, and that's been fantastic. The wading birds that have dropped in there. We've had a little ring plover breed this year. We've had lapwing, we've had red shank, oyster catchers, plus many visitors and waders, i.e. sandpipers, etc. Um, and then to sort of the dew in the crown is actually the new wetland hide, which the volunteers have been frantically building over the last 12 months and hoping to open that this year. And that will give you panoramic views, not only just over the wetland, but of the beaver enclosure as well. And once we understand the habits of these beavers uh, and where they're going to be, because during the summer months, you have a better chance of seeing them in the evenings. And once we understand where they're going to be, then obviously we'll open to the public and have beaver evenings. And hopefully, you know, people will be able to enjoy seeing the beavers as I enjoy seeing them at the moment. We've also put trail cams in, and it's really enlightened us. We've had social interaction between the two beavers. When they first arrived, they were free separately. Within two weeks on the trail cams, we were picking up footage of male and female beavers preening each other beside the water edge. You know, it was really lovely to see. And all things being well, next year we might have young beaver kits, for which will be Absolutely wonderful. Although these beavers are in an enclosure, um, it's, it's a very large enclosure. Um, for those of you who understand the old money, it was 47 acres, or about 20 hectares. And that took quite a bit of logistically making it secure, because the one thing we didn't want them to do was get out into the wild and cause disruption before we had the opportunity to demonstrate the benefits of beavers. We've had to put in over a mile of specialist fencing so that it keeps them contained. But they do feel free. It doesn't feel like an enclosure. You know, you won't be coming to a zoo if you come to Scunthorpe for sea beavers. We've been very, very lucky with this project from all the support and help we've had from various people. Um, obviously, the funding was uh, essential. Um, and we're very grateful to the Green Recovery Challenge Fund, which was a DEFRA initiative, and it was administered by the Heritage Fund um, and Environment Agency in Natural England. But uh, contractors that were involved in putting the fences up, and probably most the volunteers for the hard work they put into it, um, it was a joint effort to put the enclosure together from the contractor's point of view and from the volunteers. And, the, vo the contractors were really good because they shoe the volunteers on shortcuts in doing the fence and everything, so we could get it finished on time. We were up against the time limit, but um, we made it, and obviously on the 21st of April, the two little creatures were released, and it was um, quite an awe-inspiring moment for everybody. We were very lucky that we had probably the UK's top foremost beaver expert, Dr. Rasheen Campbell Palmer. She's called the beaver lady, the Americans call her the beaver lady, but she's really is a real passionate beaver enthusiast, but she's also very knowledgeable. And she imparted that knowledge to all the volunteers. And I can guarantee the two days that she'd been here doing the training with them, not one of them, it was like you could hear a pin drop and she gave them all that information and a good response to their questions. So, yeah, she, she taught them well. So we're, we've been in safe hands.
and the whole project has been in Nigel's safe hands. The wetland hide is finished. And the culmination of all the hard work is clear to see in the reserve. Obviously, the beaver couple are happy and well. Scalthorpe Moor Reserve was originally created for all wildlife, for birds and for mammals, but particularly for raptors, hawks and owls. They would find safe haven in what has been in the past an inhospitable county. Look carefully in springtime and you can see young tawny owls. Kestrels breeding in the many boxes provided. And even sparrowhawks build platform nests in the woodland. And the arrival of red kites prove that Sculthorpe Moor Hawk and Owl Reserve lives up to its name. But now, with beavers safely in their place, after a long road well travelled, Nigel Middleton can be justly proud of his part in creating this most magical place. <laughs>